uh, yeah, so we will be talking mainly about uh, field data replication and fatigue damage spectrum test types. Uh, we will describe data recording using ruler devices in short. We will also touch upon spectrum import, which is a nice feature and add on to random test. Uh, and uh, yeah, we also ran an, a lab experiment where we compared spectrum import and fatigue damage spectrum uh, and which impacts the uh, the object under a test more intensely uh, and which can handle longer impact and we will show we will share the results of this experiment uh, as all of those field data replication fatigue damage spectrum and spectrum import are based on recordings on the recorded file one way or another we decided we could put them together in this one webinar just to give you an overview but maybe later we will make more detailed events uh okay now then without further ado i think everyone who wanted has joined already so i'm going to give the floor to uh to our speaker today phillips you're welcome Hello everyone, in this webinar we are going to talk about field data replication tests and fatigue damage spectrum tests. And before we start, let me show you our setup and explain some basics. I hope you will be interested and this webinar will be worthwhile. First of all, what is field data replication? It's a type of test which is used for replicating recorded data from real life events like explosions, road shaking, transportation, real shocks, and so on during a vibration test. Here you can see uh, replication examples for field data replication. It can be used in shock simulations, real-life vibrations, and even bump simulations. For recording data, we have multiple devices. Here in the screen, you can see RLR19 on the left side. It can be mounted on um, some kind of a transport and record data from sensors. Here in the middle, you see RLR17 which is a pocket recorder for the data, and it can be uh, placed on a shipment container. And on the right side, you can see multiple RLC25s, which can be uh, used for recording multiple channels. And all of these systems record data in Vaufix format. It's our uh, format for um, recorded accelerogram, and it's used in field data replication tests, it is used in this analyzer and all our software products. Here you can see the recording process of uh, our signal. We placed our RLR on the quad bike and mounted some accelerometers and recorded data from them. So let's see the video. Here you can see our device mounted and there are some cables to sensors. And we recorded data from three accelerometers and this signal represents the road shaking during the ride on the quad bike. Let's stop the video. Uh, and uh, the basic configuration uh, for our FDR test consists of one regular controller. Today we use RLC21. We need an amplifier. Uh, regularly we use RLA200 and the shaker. Also, we need an accelerometer which will be placed on the shaker's table. Now let's go to our software. It's Visprobe cell. And here, uh, let's select our test type. We will select field date replication. And after that, let's create a new test. We press create test button. And here we have an ability to add our accelerogram. We press add. 
and here we have our recorded data. Here you see the signal which was recorded from the quad bike and if you don't have uh, a recorded signal you can use different uh, data types. We have a built-in converter for, from txt files, csv format, also we can work with uh, different audio files. You can press input here and select uh, the file you want to convert into VAUFX. After that we go to schedule and the main command for field data replication test is called play. Let's select our file and set its duration to for example 30 seconds. After that we go to control check the settings after that in the limits we see that our shaker is selected and here in the channels we will select a pre-created field data replication test configuration and then we are ready to start the test let's save it and let's start here you see that our system is starting up Let's scale the graph a bit. And during field data replication test, uh, you have an ability to run uh, the recorded signal from your device um, on your system and create um, a vibration test using this signal. You can uh, replicate real time, uh, real life events using this test. And here you see that we are near startup voltage and here we are running our test do we have any questions now um, let me just check Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I see a question. Uh, is there a way to export the data from your file? Uh, yes, we have an ability to export Valfix well data into three formats. Here we have a button which is called export to other format. And we can export our data to CSV, UFF, and MAT files. Here you can see that our FDR test uh, is complete. So uh, that was the basic usage of our recorded data. And now we can continue with the next step of our webinar. Uh, spectrum input. Spectrum input is a type of uh, random test uh, profile generation and it generates random test uh, profile from the recorded data and most significantly it can be used to analyze statistics from a time history recording. And let me show you the setup for this test. We go to this analyzer and let's let's change our test to random and here let's create a new test here in the profile tab you can see spectrum input button let's press it and our first step is to select our file here let's go back to our folder and select our signal here you can see the file data and on the right side we can select input settings. Our first step is to select an input method. We have two of them, hold the peaks and average. Uh, if we select the first method, the spectrum will be calculated including all the maximum points of our recorded VAUFX file. But if we select average, our file be, will be averaged and today we are going to use the second option we have 
uh, a way to filter our signal. It is called minimum values. Uh, we enter uh, the spectrum density value and all the data below uh, this value will be filtered. After that, we need to select window settings. Here we'll use hand window. Let's set lines to 800 and set overlaps parameter to 0 0.75. And after that, if you have multiple channels recorded in a file, you can use this option to select uh, the channel you need. After that, we press calculate spectrum. Here you can see the graph. And our final step is to press input button. Here you see, we created our random profile. And here we see it in the profile tab. Here we have more than 1000 lines, but your signal was imported correctly. And uh, to compare the results, let's continue with the fatigue uh, damage spectrum test. Go back to our presentation. And our first step is to talk about fatigue. Fatigue is accumulation of damage caused by stress, which is the result of vibration. Here you can see the graph, which represents stress to cycles curve. And uh, all the calculations of the fatigue are made with Palgram minor rule. Here on the right side, you can see the formula. Do you mind if I interrupt before we go too deep into fatigue? Yeah. Because I have here a couple of questions about uh, field data. Uh, one of them is, uh, can you control on several channels? Uh, in field data replication test, now we don't have an ability to use multiple control channels. We work with, with only one control channel. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? Uh, yes, a couple more. Uh, can you uh, filter the task in field data replication? Yeah, we can uh, filter uh, your signal and I'll show you it uh, just after uh, this slide. And another one was about uh, comparing uh, the original time signal uh, with the one that we have loaded, but I think we will also show it at the end. If you don't mind, we will show it at the end of the webinar. Uh, so and now I will continue with the fatigue. I told that this stress curve is connected with the Palgram minor rule. And on the right side, you can see the formula. Uh, where the lower N represents the number of cycles with some kind of level of stress, and the higher N uh, shows the number of cycles we need to destroy our object. In that case, we calculate the coefficient, and if its value is 1 or greater, that means that our object is destroyed. Here we see an example. Uh, for example, we have some kind of an object, and we know that it can survive uh, 1,000 times uh, deformation with 10 millimeter amplitude and uh, 10,000 um, times with an amplitude of one millimeter. And for example, in our software module, we make uh, 5,000 cycles of one millimeter stress and uh, 417 cycles with 10 millimeter stress. Using Palgram minor rule, we, uh, we calculate our coefficient, and here you see that our object is exhausted by 97%. And now let me go back to show the filtering option in field date replication tests. Let's close this window. Go back to field date replication, open test settings. And here, filtering option is, sorry, we have some technical issues.
here. Uh, in the main filtering option for field data replication tests is placed in default test settings. You open the main tab, and here you have FDR task filtration. You can select the filter type and select the frequency. Now let's go back to our presentation. Uh, now let's talk about fatigue damage spectrum. Uh, fatigue damage spectrum shows the damage done to the object under the test by a particular signal frequency. Uh, so like even PSD uh, is the distribution of energy by frequencies, fatigue damage spe spectrum represents the distribution of damage by frequencies. Here in the bottom you see the picture of multiple spring mass systems and each of them has own damping factor and own na natural frequency and a certain signal uh, will affect the spring mass system and after this we are going to calculate the level of damage using the Palgram minor rule. So we are going to calculate uh, the damage for every spring mass system. Um, in other words, to perform a uh, fatigue damage spectrum test, we need to calculate fatigue damage based on the recorded data. Then we are going to synthesize a signal. And uh, in that way, our calculated signal uh, will produce the same damage, uh, but in a shorter time period. Uh, here you can see the formulas you need during the fatigue damage spectrum calculation and our first step is to calculate velocity. Here on the left side you can see the formulas and the velocity is calculated using this formula on the right side and after uh, this step we need to calculate the number of cycles and their amplitudes. Uh, this is done by the rainflow algorithm. Uh, in ruler technologies, we apply the realization of this algorithm from uh, wave analysis for fatigue and oceanography toolbox. Here you can see the formula we will use. And uh, after that, we need to synthesize our signal. Um, at this step, we perform the reverse task and calculate the signal which would cause the same damage based on our FDS calculation. Uh, the damage need to be calculated analytically and uh, that means uh, we can synthesize two types of signals. We can use sign or random signal, but if we want to reduce test time, it's preferable to go with the random signal. Here on the bottom you see uh, the PSD from FDS conversion formula and it is worth mentioning that with the random signal the spring mass system gets excited not only by one component of the frequency we use the neighboring components as well and now I think we can go to our software and I'll show you the settings for FDS test here we select random, go to test settings, and here you see FDS calculator. Our first step is to add a Valfix file. Here we have a special button. We select our recorded data. And here we have calculation parameters like starting frequency and frequency. Uh, we find the value on which part of an octave we want to analyze. And here we see the coefficients from the formulas I showed previously, but uh, now we're going to leave them by default. And I recommend you to do this. And you can use multiple signals for fatigue damage spectrum and choose a way to combine them by sum or the by maximum. After that, here you see the duration 
option and for example we want this signal to affect our object for for example this kind of time value in seconds and uh, we want to run uh, our synthesized signal for example for this time value after that we recalculate fds and here you see that our uh, valve x signal which will um, impact our object will length uh, for about three hours and we successfully converted it into the test which will uh, wait only 50 minutes after we recalculated fds we can calculate psd and here we have enabled create test profile button and we press it and here we see we have our created test profile uh, to show you the difference between random uh, FDS test and the random spectrum input test, we made an experiment. I'll show you the short video. We tried uh, to destroy our light bulb. It was taken from a car. And it, uh, this video consists of two time lap lapses. Uh, and let me show you this video. Uh, that was a regular spectrum input eight hour test. And uh, during this test, we tried to destroy the light bulb. Here you see that we replicate the signal which was recorded and after that recalculated into the spectrum. And here you see that the light bulb uh, wasn't broken. And now uh, we made a four hour time lapse of uh, FDS test. And as a result, we replicated our uh, signal, which represented 400 hours of stress, but we covered it in four hours uh, after recalculation into fatigue damage spectrum. And here you see, we successfully damaged our lamp here you see it is broken. Uh, do we have any questions now? Uh, yes, but they are also about FDR, uh, not FDS. Uh, I think it's okay. Uh, which type of shaker limits are used for FDR, for FDR test? Uh, now um, I can say we have three types of setting limits for the test. It's sign, random and shock. And for FDR test, we're using uh, the shock column in the shaker settings. Uh, there is actually one more question, but I think we'll leave it uh, up until the end, a couple of them. Okay. okay. So let's talk about our results. Uh, we had an eight hour spectrum input test and the lamp didn't show any fatigue damage on it. And after a four hour uh, fatigue damage spectrum test, the lamp was damaged and it stopped working at all. Uh, here you can see the table in which we compare a fatigue, uh, fatigue damage spectrum test, field data replication and spectrum input. As you see, we have different ways to generate signal in every type of test in FDR we use a regular uh, direct signal replication uh, in spectrum input our calculations are based on fast Fourier transform and in FDS we use Palgram minor rule FDR is used uh, to replicate the regular recorded signal. Spectrum input is usually used when we need to analyze uh, the results of our spectrum calculation from our file. And FDS is used when we want to imitate some fatigue damage for a long time period, but we want to use a short time test. Uh, now let's go back to questions. 
Uh, yeah, so this is basically, this is all right about the main contents of, of the webinar. Um, yeah, the question that is left is, uh, can you use your vibration controller as a data acquisition system? Yeah, I think we mentioned it. I think yeah. Uh, maybe I didn't mention that you also can use ROC21 as a data acquisition system. But uh, as you know, it has lower frequency ranges, but uh, you can use it. And um, maybe you want to show data recording uh, in the software. Yeah, in our software here. We have two ways to record data. First of all, in the uh, analysis tab, every test has this tab. Here you set uh, the path to recorded file, enable the channels, and also we have an ability to start recording. Here you can see the channels for recording. It's the most common way to record the data during the test. And also, we have a special test, which is called data recording. Here we have a bit more settings, but in that case, your system will work only as data acquisition system. We have a data recording option in, our, in other, our software product. It's uh, this analyzer, and uh, you have multiple options to record your data file. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another question. Can you cut uh, both uh, your proprietary files? Files. Yeah, files. Uh, yeah, we can edit uh, Valfx files in our special software with Analyzer, but now I don't have it installed on my PC, so I'll only describe the options. In uh, uh, the data analysis mode, you have an ability to filter the signals. We have a lot of filter types you can cut signals you can even uh, create some mathematical operations with your signals and i think it's useful because you can uh, create different graphs for example you can create spectrum analyze the results and filter and cut the frequencies you don't want to see in the signal yeah maybe we want to show this functionality in some other event in some other way uh, there was also a request uh, to see the original time signal compared with the signal we have loaded. So there are um, two graphs which can be used for such a purpose. And uh, <coughs> one is graph is uh, maintenance error versus time. It shows the uh, RMS difference of signals. And the second graph is uh, pointwise error. It shows the uh, difference of between each of the uh, samples of the original and replicated signals. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Ilya. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So as I can see, that's all. The question about filtering. Oh uh, yeah, we answered that. I answered yes, this. we can filter. Um, yeah, if you have any more questions, it's a good time now to send those. And I will just sum up saying that all the options that we describe are available to you, to ruler users. So both data recording option, FDR, spectrum import, which is for now is just an add-on to random tests. So if you have random tests, it's already immediately available to you, which is a huge advantage. Uh, yeah, and FDS. Um, it's also quite in demand. And as you see, we provide the full maths and uh, the availability of this test uh, is there in ruler systems. So if you have any more questions, you can contact us. Uh, you can see our contact emails, uh, the phone number. So please don't hesitate to ask any further questions. And we will also write a follow-up. So if you feel like uh, there is something else you want to know about these test types or there are any other issues, don't hesitate to contact us. We always welcome your questions, um, any criticism that you might have about our events are also welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Please follow our social network, sign up to RULA LinkedIn page, and we hope to see you in our further events. Have a great day.